And good afternoon, everyone. This is Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor. My name is Jim, and this is the Friday afternoon QSO VLOC network. This is a directed network, and I am net control. If at any time during this net should an emergency arise, please notify net control, and we'll stand by and allow those in need to access this frequency. Is there any priority or emergency traffic at this time? And hearing nothing, we will continue. This net is all about ham radio and being all that you can be. That's what our QSO VLOG network is all about. Trying to help people achieve the best sounding station possible. Thanks for dropping by. FYI, my background is 50 years in commercial broadcasting, where a lot of big bucks are spent on audio processing equipment and getting it set up correctly to get the best sounding station possible. Well, long story short, when I became a ham radio operator, I could hear immediately a large discrepancy in on-air technical proficiency. A lot of stations were running with very poor mic equalization, very muddy, with little articulation. And as I continued to work stations, I realized most of the stations were also running very low average peak modulation, many around 30% of average peak modulation. So with my background, I felt I could help or at least try. I knew that most modern day ham transceivers did have enough onboard processing equipment to be able to overcome most all of the problems. So it would just be a matter of developing a generic dynamic range setup procedure and then adjusting the onboard EQ gear. And so I started the QSO VLOG network with the phrase, if you have a radio you want to check out, give us a shot. And today we're currently featuring over 2600 QSO VLOG air check recordings. And you can access these recordings by going to YouTube and doing a call letter search for KC9VKV followed by the word logbook. That's Kilo Charlie 9 Victor Kilo Victor followed by the word logbook. Both KC9VKV logbook and KC9VKV highlights are segments of our main YouTube homepage of Jim's Radio Story, where we celebrate a 50-year career in commercial broadcasting. A 50-year journey from a 5-watt pirate radio station as a 12-year-old to production director of a major 50,000-watt AM broadcast facility. And the thing that makes this truly a unique story is that I have the actual audio masters from all along the way. Over 2,600 shows, including many full-length major music concerts and radio documentaries. You'll have to check it out and subscribe. Jim's Radio Story on a YouTube search. Our mission statement for the QSO VLOG network is to establish a higher technical level of radio transmissions of the human voice by the intelligent utilization of available electronics in current amateur radio transceivers. Our setup, while generic in nature, converts the average 10 dB dynamic range transmitter with an average 30% of peak modulation to a much fuller 3 dB dynamic range with an average 80 to 85% of peak modulation. This substantial boost in audio transmit level is extremely beneficial in high noise levels and heavy QRM. It allows you to punch through when others fail. The second part of our transmitter setup has to do with proper mic equalization. We're looking to optimize the transmitted voice for a higher degree of intelligibility through the use of EQ patterns that bring out the articulation aspects of the human voice. Again, why need to hear the voice if you can't understand the words? Also this afternoon on the receive side, we're running four internet SDR receivers, monitoring New York, Pennsylvania, Georgia, and Virginia, trying to get the best copy from our 100 watt friends. Now the audio from these four SDR receivers comes up on a six position rotary selector. Also on this selector is our local receiver audio. And today, our local receiver is running three large 10-foot vertical magnetic loop antennas. One aimed at 90 degrees, one aimed at zero degrees, and the number three is aimed at 134 degrees. These are run as a directional scanner array with a manual voting system six position rotary selector. Also today on the transmit side, we'll be running our NOSWR specially oriented resonant dipole antenna. 
One leg of this resin at Dipole runs broadside to Montreal, Canada. The other leg runs broadside to Miami, Florida. As we were constructing our station, our mantra was 20 over from Montreal to Miami with a hot spot through the Carolinas. And although conditions may vary, the general performance of this antenna supports its mission. Also today, we'll be running our input source indicator. So when we switch from an internet SDR receiver to our local receiver, you'll be able to hear the switch and see the switch. You'll have to check it out on our YouTube QSO Vlog video. And as we come together for another Friday afternoon QSO Vlog network, let us pause just a moment for the amateur radio operator's prayer. Lord, we pray for clear 20 over S9 communications today. Let all our transmissions fill the air and reach their destinations QSA5 to be understood by all. And as we pray for good radio conditions, let us also pray for good human conditions. During this time of pandemic that has challenged us all, we pray that you'll protect everyone, especially our elderly. And also, Lord, we seek your divine intervention to bring peace to a very divided United States. As we go through a very conflicting time in America's history, with dark clouds all around, we pray that you'll reduce life's daily political QRM between our brothers and sisters. And through your love and guidance, show us the way to find peace and harmony. Help us to communicate with one another 20 over S9. Thank you, Lord, and God bless and protect America. Amen. To continue, since this part of the band has many nets trying to operate in a very confined area, I would appreciate all stations checking into our QSO VLOG net to keep their band pass to no wider than 100 to 2900. And again, please, no wider than 100 to 2900. This is the Friday afternoon QSO VLOG network. And now let's check in and see if Charlie, K1GZL, is on frequency to bring us up to date on the latest 40-meter band propagation. Charlie's QTH is up north in northern New Hampshire, near the Canadian border. Charlie, got a copy? Yes, sir, Charlie, I've got you on uh, Milford uh, at about uh, uh, five over, Roger. Uh, five over, Roger. Okay, so Milford today. Uh, I just got in here and I haven't had a chance to do two. But my water is not running. I am out of water. It is not running. I don't, I don't know what the problem is. I'm better, but I've had better days. Better days. It was uh, uh, the, uh, over two and a half hour drive from White River Junction up to here. Uh, so and there we are. I'm going to play a little of Captain Mike here to see if that works. Also, you were talking about. Charlie, uh, Charlie, yeah, you're correct. We'll be leaving tomorrow at 2.30 out of here. Uh, takeoff airport and the landing airport. Oh, boy. Down a little bit to about five. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll have to do some more hunting around. I only got a little bit of Captain Mike out there. Uh, KC9 uh, VKV K1GZL is copy. It's easy, mostly cloudy. The sun's breaking through, and the temperature got up close to 80 degrees today. 80 degrees. Roger, Roger, Charlie. Well, it's so good to hear your voice. It is so good for, you know, to hear your voice, and uh, I'm glad that uh, everything is uh, hopefully going well at this point, Roger. Everything is uh, hopefully going well at this point, Roger. Well, thank you for that, uh, uh, for that vote, of, <laughs> vote of confidence. I found another tape here. I'm not sure which, which one this is, which one this is, but I'm going to insert it. Let's see, here we go. She misplaced my reading glasses. I didn't. Well, it's too bad. I can't seem to find things. Uh, you know, I've had a no chance 
no chance to uh, to hunt uh, to hunt for anything, uh, unfortunately. So I guess we'll have to uh, wait. We'll have to wait until uh, next uh, next uh, week. Anyway, you're coming in very well. S seven to nine direct. S seven to nine direct. And I should be getting that amplifier early this coming week. Early this coming uh, week. Wait a minute. Fifteen two, Alfie over. Early on the ground, Philadelphia facing north northwest. Uh, you're about a five four, Charlie fifty four, uh, on forty meters upper side band. Uh, K one GZL, K H four whiskey, Charlie. And uh, and uh, Ken and Ramush I think the other day. Okay, that was that. So, okay, uh, Jim, we won't hold it too long. I'll try to catch you next week. Try to catch you next week. KC9 VKV K1 G is that all? Roger, Roger, Charlie. Well, listen, 73 up that way, sir. Glad to have you aboard. Miss you a bunch, and glad to glad to hear you on the channel. And uh, hopefully we'll uh, join paths uh, next Friday. Uh, so again, 73 up that way. This is the Friday afternoon Kiso Vila program. Uh, my name is Jim, better known in some circles as Dr. VKV. And we record now live till 5. So if you have a radio you want to check out, give me a shout and we'll... Uh, I'll bring it up on YouTube uh, by uh, noon tomorrow, and uh, you'll be able to get it. Uh, go to YouTube, do a call letter search, KC9VKV, followed by the word logbook, and that will take you to this recording. It'll be cut number one and a series of 2,600 QSO VLOG air check recordings, and again, I'll have it uploaded by noon tomorrow. So, uh, without further ado, let's open it up and see who's there. Uh, if you have a radio you want to check out, give me a shout. <laughs> Yeah, we had kind of a light this afternoon to begin with, so we'll uh, go with another thrilling edition of Adventures in Radio Land. This segment, Hasty Decisions 2, subtitled The German Tank Transmitter. From time to time on our QSO VLAG network, I discuss the downside of hasty decisions. Now, I don't want to minimize the uh, obvious upside hasty decisions, but the downside can be far more interesting. Hence, let's move along with the tale of the German tank transmitter. It was a hot afternoon in West Palm Beach, Florida. I was a young man of 20 or so, working on uh, and in my unair conditioned shop. The Florida heat was such that sweat was pouring from my body. I took my shirt off to try and cool down as I wrestled with this 30-pound boat anchor thing that was on my workbench. It was an old German tank transmitter. I'd purchased it from an uh, Army Navy surplus store for 25 bucks. And, uh, and it was obviously came from Rommel and his German Desert Tank Corps, or so I assumed by the amount of dust and sand that it covered was covered with. At least that's what uh, I imagined it to be, you know. Uh, the Germans lost that war in the desert, perhaps just because of this radio. This was a low-band VHF radio with a frequency range of 20 to 50 megahertz. And sometimes propagation distances, better known as skip, can be outstanding at those frequencies. Too much so for Rommel and his boys in the desert, because their tank transmissions were being copied loud and clear on the other side of the world, in Washington, D.C., much to Rommel's chagrin. Well, this bad boy was sitting on my countertop now. It had been modified somewhere along the way from 12 or 24 volts of D.C. to 115 volts A.C. I had it plugged in and uh, all the tubes were lit, but... You know, there was no output as I keyed the mic, and all of the info on the radio was written in German, so it was not very helpful. But I could almost swear this was Rommel's personal command tank radio. I could almost see his fingerprints in the dust on this radio. But alas, it would not transmit a word. And I wondered why. 
I had removed the outside cover plates, exposing many beautiful laced cable runs, all covered with a protective aged orange heavy-duty wax. Most of the wiring appeared to be color-coded, but it was very hard to follow the wiring in a laced-up bundle. So, what to do? I have to open up those laced bundles to get a better look. So I took a pair of small manicure scissors and began cutting uh, the cable la lacing. It was a tough going. The lacing was very tight and uh, the wax was doing it all it could to keep the bundle together. Well, I'll just have to try a little harder to get these little scissor blades into the bundle so I can cut the lacing away to be able to trace the wiring out. So here I am with my thumb and finger through the holes of this small pair of chrome scissors. I had uh, moved uh, well uh, over the transmitter to get a better angle so my sweaty chest was laying on the frame and suddenly everything went red. My body was vibrating violently. I had cut into the high voltage line. When I came to I was still standing up but now turned away from the transmitter. And why was my body still vibrating violently? And something else was wrong. I wasn't breathing. Apparently, it had been a perfect storm. My chest on the radio and my fingers through the scissor holes. Meanwhile, back to the not breathing part. I could uh, think about breathing, but uh, I couldn't do it. My lungs were paralyzed from the shock. I also knew that I had a limited time uh, in that condition before I would pass out, maybe permanently. Then I began pounding myself in the chest with my fist, trying to restore my paralyzed lungs. And then, slowly, ever so slowly, I could take little gulps of air. About an hour later, I could breathe a little, but it hurt. A week later, I had recovered. Now looking back in retrospect, my hasty decision was to start cutting into that cable bundle without first unplugging the radio and shorting out the high voltage. The good side, I had escaped death, barely. Later, much later, I dug a hole and buried that German transmitter, never for it to threaten anyone else's life. This has been another thrilling edition of Adventures in Radio Land. Well, uh... Gosh, uh, one of those occurrences in my life I'd just as soon forget, but if it helps somebody else to not make hasty decisions uh, when they're working on equipment, uh, uh, so be it. Uh, that's what I'm looking for is a, a little um, uh, suggestion as to one's uh, safety in uh, working on equipment and not make hasty decisions when you're doing so. Always uh, double check to be sure your equipment's unplugged and uh, short out the high voltage uh, at that point to make sure you don't get hit by uh, a capacitor charge in the power supply. Anyway, this is the Friday afternoon Kizzo Vlognet. If you have a radio or you want to check out, give me a shout. Vlognet. If you have a radio or you want to check out, I heard somebody up, I think, in Bloomington, uh, Indiana. Was that uh, correct? Yes, I think in Bloomington, uh, Indiana. Was that uh, correct? Yeah, Roger, Roger, Jim. Uh, how do you copy uh this is Radio, Roger, sir, I've got uh, I've got you about uh, uh, two dB over the um, uh, uh, PASDR noise level, uh, but I do have a copy on you. So come back one more time, slowly, phonetically, with your call sign. I have a copy on you. So come back one more time, slowly, phonetically, with your call sign. Oh, shoot. Uh, Mother Nature's playing games again uh, this afternoon. I, I heard you there for a while, but uh, then I just went around the horn and I couldn't cough you at all. So uh, let's try one more time. Come up on that mic and uh, let me hear you, uh, call sign, Roger. One more time. Come up on that mic and uh, let me hear you, uh, call sign, Roger. Okay, yeah, Jim, let's try one more time here. Show a lot, 9, United Radio, K9, you are. Uh, I'll copy you, Jim. 
Oh, I got that, Roger. And what's the name there? I'm United Radio. Oh, I got that, Roger. And what's the name there? Yeah, name is Joe. Juliet Ocean Echo. Joe. Roger, Joe. And what's your location, sir? Roger, Joe. And what's your location, sir? I am in uh, Bloomington, Indiana today. Bloomington, Indiana. Over. Uh, Roger, on uh, Indiana. And uh, what's your radio? Oh, Roger, that boy, it's a rocky road, I tell you, there's a lot of static, there's some uh, thunder boomer somewhere, I'm not sure where. A lot of static, there's some thunder boomer somewhere, I'm not sure where. Okay, I'll very, uh, very quickly uh, check that out, and uh, Uh, Roger, Joe, uh, come back with your radio. What what radio is that you're running today? Uh, Roger, Joe, uh, come back with your radio. What, what radio is that you're running today? This is a Kenwood TS 2000. Kenwood TS Tango Sierra 2000. Over. Roger, from what I can hear, it's sounding really good. It looks to be uh, that your uh, audio is about uh, 3 dB dynamic range, which is uh, exactly where we would put it. And it does have a good cut to it. I might uh, suggest just a little more top, a couple of clicks of a treble EQ additional from where you are, Roger. More top, a couple of clicks of a treble EQ additional from where you are, Roger. Okay, Roger, Roger. Yeah, I'll, uh, I don't believe this has an EQ on it, so uh, I'm stuck with the uh, audio that it provides, but uh, thanks for the uh, quick chat. I'm, uh, I'm running an amplifier here. Let me turn off the amplifier and see if I change it. Uh, Roger, Joe, it makes a difference between copying you and not copying you. When you uh, dumped off the imp, uh, you went right into my noise level. Uh, never to, well, almost never to be heard from again. But uh, uh, thank goodness you uh, found the switch to turn it back on. And uh, then you popped up about uh, 5 or 6 dB over uh, the uh, PASDR noise level. Roger. 5 or 6 dB over uh, the uh, PASDR noise level. I tried, but uh, why don't you give me about 10 seconds to tell me about your antenna system uh, with your amp on, and uh, let me see if I've got a copy of my local antenna. With your amp on, and uh, let me see if I've got a copy of my local antenna. You okay, Roger, Roger, Jim. K9 United Radio, Joe. And, and it's uh, running, uh, let's see here, this particular one is running in east, no, in north to south configuration. So the wires are running north to south, and it's giving an east and west uh, broadside pattern uh, towards Europe. And uh, it's in, the apex is at about 70 feet, 70 feet, uh, broadside to, to Europe. Uh, go ahead. Oh, I've got a good copy on my local antenna now. Uh, with your, uh, I guess you had your amp on. Did you uh, maintain the same antenna, or did you switch antennas? Uh, no, this is the same antenna. I'm on the same antenna, and I'm going to drop the amp out. Okay, now the amp is off. It's just a, maybe a 50 watts of drive power. And now I'll go back to the amp on. There we go. The amplifier is on. That's about 500 watts PET. Uh, KC9 VKV, this is K9. You are over. Roger, Roger. Looks to be about an 8 dB difference between amp on and amp off. Uh, very pleasurable uh, with the amp on uh, on my local antenna, which is a, uh, a resonant uh, dipole antenna. Roger. Yeah, okay, Roger. Very good. All right. Well, I uh, appreciate the test. I'm getting a little bit of, uh, I don't know, the plate, uh, the plate current meter is bouncing around here on the, uh, on the amplifier, but I suspect that that may be a faulty metering circuit. Um, it seems to be working the way it should, so it just is, uh, seems to be a, um, something with the metering, I think, with the meter uh, circuit. Maybe I need a, uh, maybe a capacitor is, uh, is going bad, or maybe a, a ground is uh, coming, 
cut, has come loose on these old amplifiers. Anyway, very good. I won't hold it, Jim. I'll let you pick up some others tonight. But uh, thanks for being there, and I uh, wish you well uh, down there uh, near uh, Evansville. And uh, a beautiful signal, as always. Uh, KC9VKV, K9UR. Back to you, Jim. Over. Roger, Joe. Uh, we're up around Louisville, actually, uh, just across the river from Louisville, Kentucky, on the Indiana side uh, in uh, New Albany, Indiana, which is just uh, on the other side of uh, Louisville, Kentucky. And I uh, had a chance to hear your audio, and it's just beautiful. Nice nice top end, very articulated, so you got it going on. If you want to hear your radio, if you go to YouTube, do a call letter search for KC9VKV, followed by the word logbook. That will take you to this recording. It'll be cut number one in a series of 2,600 QSOV log air check recordings, and I'll have it uploaded by noon tomorrow. Roger. Okay, very good, Jim. Excellent. Well, I won't. Uh, I won't hold it. I wish you a, a nice uh, evening and uh, seven three. Thanks again for the uh, for the quick buzz, and we'll uh, we'll catch you again. Now, KC9 VKV. This is K9 UR, and I'll clear on your final here, and uh, wish you a very good afternoon. Now, KC9 VKV. K9 UR is uh, now clear. Uh, good afternoon, Jim. Roger, Roger. Sounding beautiful, sounding beautiful. I think you'll enjoy your recording. 73 up that way. We'll catch you later. This is the Friday afternoon, QSO VLOCnet. If you have a radio you want to check out, give me a shout. Well, things are a little light this afternoon, so it's time now for another thrilling edition of Adventures in Radio Land. This segment, the Bob Heil visit. Well, we were indeed lucky enough to have Dr. Bob Heil, K9EID, drop by our QSO VLOG net to say hello. And I must say, unfortunately, I did not have a good 20-over copy on him, and I felt badly for not having a West internet SDR location ready to fall back on to resolve the received signal situation. It then occurred to me that all my internet SDR locations had been chosen pretty well for creating a north-south eastern USA grid since most of our received transmissions occur from those areas. So to form a more perfect union as they say, I have now designated one of my four internet SDR receivers as a wildcard location receiver and it's now loaded with a large out of the norm internet SDR locations list and ready to resolve any signal issues that may come up, particularly signals from the West. Just a little tweaking of our SDR operation. Well, during his visit, Bob did get a few points in related to antennas and his preferences, and mine, the importance of a tuned resonant dipole antenna and how effective they are as an RF radiator. They are simple to build and somewhat directional, so you could build two with a selector switch to look north and south or east and west, along with your present antenna, so it could give you some options. Before our QSO, Bob had been working in his shack for a while, uh, repurposing some of his radios, and he had been listening to our QSO VLOG net, and was nice enough to say, um, our net was uh, service was to quote Bob, your work is impeccable, and I appreciate it all. And coming from Bob Heil, it is a tribute that I will long cherish. Bob at the time was running barefoot with his ICOM 7851, and I was talking about uh, his uh, ICM mics designed especially for ICOM. He was commissioned by ICOM to design a more perfectly matched mic for the ICOM input level situation. And as he stated, not all mics work well with ICOM radios. That's why ICOM chose Bob to design his ICM mic especially for that that radio. And as I looked at my studio receiver spectrum analyzer, as Bob spoke, I realized what a perfect job Bob has done. It was wall-to-wall -wall frequency content, from 100 hertz up to 2900 hertz. And the proof is in the listening. And as you copy the mail on Bob's voice, you can hear every word clearly articulated for clarity, even less uh, than, well, even in less perfect than perfect conditions or situations. It was really giving my spectrum analyzer a workout. 
Great job, Bob. And if you would like to hear our QSO, uh, go to KC9VKV, Bob Heil, 127.23, on a YouTube search. That's KC9VKV, Bob Heil, 127.23, on a YouTube search. This has been another thrilling edition of Adventures in Radio Land. This segment, The Bob Heil Visit. This is KC9VKV. The Friday afternoon QSO VLUGNET. If you have a radio you want to check out, give me a shout. If you have a radio you want to check out, give me a shout. Uh, Kilo 4, Charlie Uniform, Lima here in Virginia. Yes, uh, Virginia Station, come back slowly, phonetically with your call sign. Yes, uh, Virginia Station, come back slowly, phonetically with your call sign. Yes, sir, Kilo... Uh, <laughs> Kilo 4, Charlie Uniform Lima. Kilo 4, Charlie Uniform Lima. Jim, I talked to you uh, a few years ago uh, when I first bought uh, this particular HF rig, and uh, you gave me some advice, and uh, I, I made those settings on the rig, and, and I have not changed them. Uh, for the past couple of years uh, when it comes to the compression and the mic gain and all that. And and I have to say, uh, you know, it's been a couple of years now, and I, I was just scanning through the frequencies, and I heard you, and I said, wow, I wonder if I can if I can connect with you again and, and uh, see if those settings are still working for me. Over. Uh, yes, sir. Pretty close. Your dynamic range is uh, 3 dB, so your average percent of peak modulation is 80 to 85 uh, percent. Could use uh, maybe a little more top end now, a couple of clicks of uh, additional treble EQ from where you are, Roger. just a tick there, uh, about uh, 5%, and uh, is that a noticeable uh, difference on the meter, or I'm really more concerned about clarity. I've got a deep voice anyway. I am using uh, an ICOM uh, microphone. This is uh, the SM30 Sierra Mic 30 uh, with an ICOM 7300. Over. Yes, sir. So uh, why don't you go ahead and take that top end up to plus 5, Treble EQ up to plus 5, and let me listen to you. End up to plus 5, Treble EQ up to plus 5, and let me listen to you. Do you want me to uh, add another 5 or take the 5 off that I turned on? Now go ahead to uh, plus 5, plus 5 on your Treble EQ on uh, that 7300. Plus 5. Roger. Treble EQ on uh, that 7300. Plus 5. Roger. Okay, minor adjustment, uh, another plus five, and uh, audio, one, two, three, three, two, one. Sure is hot, you know. I'm, I'm sitting here looking at uh, the news and this big heat bowl that's over the country, and, you know, my air conditioner is running. It sure is nice inside, but uh, i got to take those dogs outside, and we all come in sweating over. Uh, yes, sir. Now, uh, do you know that you're in that... Uh wide uh, uh, 100 to 2900 transfer band mode. Yes, sir. Now, you do, you do want to be in the wide mode. I, I, I think you went to the uh, narrow mode. You want to be in that 100 to 2900 bandpass, Roger? You want to be in that 100 to 2900 bandpass, Roger? Okay. Well, that's where I'm at. Hang on. i got to get rid of this uh, background noise. I have a, a scanner here. Okay. So, uh, for compression... For compression and um, the mic gain, uh, looks like everything is uh, is usable as it is now. Over. Roger, you should be running uh, uh, three on your compression. Should be running three on the compressor, Roger. Three on your compression. Should be running three on the compressor, Roger.
Okay. I was actually uh, running a six. That's where we ended up uh, the last time you and I connected a couple of years ago. I just reduced it uh, to a three, so I've got a mic gain of about 75%. When I started the uh, conversation with you, I was at 65% on the mic gain and 6 on compression, and uh, now I'm at 75% on the mic gain and 3. Actually, my compression is off. Let me turn it on. Okay, now I'm 75% mic gain and uh, compression is 3. All right. All right, now I want you to go to your AOC meter with mic in hand. And as you say the magic word, audio, don't stress it, just say it. Uh, and that will you'll become a human test tone generator. Audio, and adjust your mic gain until your AOC is reading two-thirds. Roger. No, sir, leave the compressor on, but you're just uh, a token amount. You're at a three on that compressor, Roger. Just uh, a token amount. You're at a three on that compressor, Roger. Roger, it is at a three. Audio, audio. I'm um, probably three quarters on the ALC. Let me turn it down some more. Try to get this thing. You know, as a matter of fact, I'm down to 22%. My AOC is pretty much uh, staying at the uh, uh, probably three-fifths of the way over. Roger. So we're looking to, uh, you know, be at two-thirds, which is a, a little to the right of center on the AOC meter, Roger. Two-thirds, which is a little to the right of center on the AOC meter, Roger. Roger that. Okay. Well, let me move the microphone uh, a little bit further away from my from my uh, face, and uh, I think that's about it. Right about there, James, looks uh, looks good on my end, over. Yes, sir, it sounds just beautiful. I would run it just like that. Get the Gorilla Tape out and tape her down. Just beautiful. I would run it just like that. Get the Gorilla Tape out and tape her down. All right, super good. So uh, you said you were going to go fishing. What kind of fishing do you do, James? <laughs> About uh, anything that moves in the water, I don't care. I, you know, it uh, doesn't matter. It's just uh, a, a figment of my imagination, mostly, Roger. Figment of my imagination, mostly, Roger. <laughs> I totally understand. Okay. Hey, I got your YouTube site, and uh, I heard your instructions uh, to the other gentleman there that uh, he sounded pretty good here in Virginia, too. And uh, I, I appreciate your time, James. Again, uh, second time over the last couple of years. Uh, very helpful. Great service uh, for people that just want to get that good check, and uh, I appreciate what you do. So have a great day, James. Uh, KC9, VKB, uh, K4, CUL. Roger, uh, see you out. What's, what's the name there? Roger, uh, see you out. What's, what's the name there? Yeah, yeah, the name is Steve, Sierra Echo Alpha Bravo. Sierra Echo Alpha Bravo. Unusual name, but uh, family name. Over. Uh, Roger that. And what's your location? is uh, Culpepper, Culpepper, Virginia. Roger, that, that was the uh, 7300 we're working on, Roger. Roger, that, that was the uh, 7300 we're working on, Roger. That's right, 7300 uh, with the ICOM uh, SM30 microphone. Yes, sir. Sounds great. And uh, like I say, we'll have it uploaded to YouTube uh, by noon tomorrow. So, 73, have yourself a great afternoon, a beautiful weekend, Roger. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Have a great day. This is the Friday afternoon Kiss of VlogNet. My name is Jim, and if you have a radio you want to check out, give me a shout. My name is Jim, and if you have a radio you want to check out, give me a shout.
you have a radio you want to check out, give me a shout. Eh, nothing heard, so uh, gosh, uh, I think we are going fishing uh, for sure. Uh, this is KC9VKV, and uh, uh, I see about a clock on the wall, there's another dead fly. Boy, this is populous as far as flies are concerned today. Must be an open door somewhere. But do we got to get out of here and uh, go fishing. So we'll say 73 all, and we'll uh, catch you later. This is KC9VKV, returning the frequency back to amateur use. This is KC9VKV, and back to normal amateur radio use. KC9VKV, clear. <laughs>